holy. Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God over all who rules eternity. unto the Lord, and to show forth thy praise unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning, and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten string, and upon the palstry, upon the harp, it a solemn song. For the Lord has made me glad through thy work, I will triumph in the work of thy hand. Amen. Amen. This church is still at worship. Glory be to the Father. just want to give you the power of attorney to take full control of my life. Use me whenever time you want to use me. Whatever you ask me to do, I will do it. And I promise dear Lord that I will not quit. And so I pray that you will loan upon me now your Holy Spirit. Speak to me to us today and grant us your power from our eye. Send us a message now, we pray, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let me say good morning to everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy 
Thank you. And welcome to everyone this morning. And I think I see somebody that I didn't know before. That sister over there, I don't know if I've seen you here before. So good morning to you and the rest of brothers and sisters here. So good morning. Happy Sabbath to you. And hope you will enjoy the day. Yes. Today is a blessed day, a lovely day, a happy day. We will now turn to Titus 2, verse 11 to 15. It will be on the screen. Can we all send that? Let's begin of the three. One, two, three. For, For the, the grace of God, God that brings us salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exalt and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Amen. Amen. Let no man despise you. We will now open him. 601. We turn, we are turned.
I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord to worship. Yes. For this is indeed the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Are you glad to be in the house of God today? Oh, yes. And that's so. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How about hallelujah? Hallelujah. How about thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. His name is worthy to be praised. Amen. It's scripture reading time. I'm going to ask you to take your Bibles, if you have them with you, or your electric, electronic devices. Or it's going to be on the screen as well. It's Nahum chapter 2, reading from verses 3, 3 and 4. We're going to read 3 and 4. And we can read it together. If Read it in concert, right? Are we there yet? Nahum chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And read thus. The shield of his mighty men is made red. The valiant men are in scarlet. The chariots shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation. And the fair trees shall be terribly shaken. The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like lightning. Amen. May the Lord add his blessings on the reading of his holy words. Amen. At this time, I want to ask you to reverently kneel as we seek the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jehovah God, in prayer. Let us kneel. Is the blessed hour of prayer. your holy sabbath day that we your children can come boldly to the throne of grace we thank you for your goodness and your love and your compassion that you have given us and so for this lord we ask you that you will forgive us of all our misdeeds and our sins and create lord within us a clean heart Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wash us thoroughly and make us as white as snow. Like David says, renew within us a right spirit. And may we not fall into sin. Or may we not run into any kind of dangers. But that in all that we do or say, may we be ordered by your governance. We're thankful today to know that have a little talk with Jesus makes our circumstances right make our situation right so we say thank you this morning for qualifying us now lord for eternity we present ourselves before you i pray that you will touch each and every one of us here today from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet and whatever we have gone through this week we cast everything upon you for you care for us we ask that you would touch your people once again. We thank you, Lord, for protecting us from the pandemic out there. The pandemic that the world is fearful of. 
But we are thankful to know that you have a covering over your people. The blood of Jesus is up in our hearts. So we don't walk in fear. We walk in faith. Knowing that you're leading us and you're guiding us and you're right beside us every step of the way. So Lord, we put our lives into your hand. Lead us and guide us every step of the way. Lord, we pray, Father, that you would help us not to be silent, but that we will promulgate the gospel of Jesus Christ wherever we go. We will let the light of God shine in us so that others looking on will want to know what are we connected to. And we'll take that opportunity to share the love of Jesus with them. So Lord, this is the Sabbath day and the day that you have made. So Lord, we ask that you will help us to empty, empty ourselves of anything that would distract us from keeping this Sabbath day holy. So Lord, bless everything that is done here today. May everything that is done here today be done decently and in order. And may you be lifted up and may you be glorified. May self be annihilated and may you be lifted up. We present the speaker of the hour before you. A young man that you have used in times past to promulgate your gospel, to present your word. I pray, Lord, today will be a special day, a day, a day that will, you will use him more than ever before. And that the words that he speak will come forth with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, will come forth with power and with clarity. May you give each and every one of us here receptive hearts to listen to your word. Bless us now, Lord, we pray. We take everything here today in control. And we thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. speaking I think without music this service could be a little boring sometimes so we're gonna add some music to spice up worship a little bit now I feel like a ram caught in the ticket today I walked in and I was told that you know a certain person that usually sings I have to walk in his shoes now my shoes are a little bigger than this so I'm not I don't know how I'm gonna walk in his small shoes but I'm gonna try I'm going to squeeze my foot into his shoes today. Amen. All right, so I had asked that you to cue that for me, sir. So. You like the splendor of heaven? You got it, you got it PJ? Where is the volume there, please? Stars in 
But he's a little, he, he, he sometimes comes across very strong, but because he has that passion for righteousness, that's why he's the way he is. And he has a passion to see souls be born for the kingdom, that's why he's the way he is. And, and, and his concept is that there's no time to butter up things, it's time to present the gospel to the people straight as an arrow. Don't, don't circumvent, but present the word. That's what Steve is. And so, if, you know, I ask you to pray for him, that God will use him mightily today, that he will be an oracle of God, so that the words that he presents would not be his words, but may it be God's words. Pray for him. But before he comes to us, I am asked again to sing a special, a special song. I couldn't think of anything else, you know, such a short notice, but I am going to try and sing this song. I'm trying to find the words of it, but go ahead. I'll try and remember, remember it. God is bigger than all of us here, and that's what we're going to sing about. It's a, it's a song. Give God praise, right? Who made the mountains? 
Who made the trees? Who made the rivers that flow to the sea? And who set the moon in the starry skies? Somebody bigger than you and I. Who made the flowers? Bloom in the spring. Who made the birds for the moon to sing? And who stood the moon in the starry skies? Somebody bigger. your company, company. and with his love you guide him he walks beside you just like he walks with me when I am weary filled with despair who gives you courage to go on from here And who gives you faith That will never die Somebody bigger than you And I Bigger than you person bigger than you and I is? Jesus. Amen. Happy Sabbath everyone. Happy Sabbath. I say happy Sabbath everyone. Happy Sabbath. Are you happy to be here? Oh, yes. Yes. Truly indeed. This is another beautiful Sabbath which the Lord has afforded us. Yes. I just want to extend my Welcome to us all. Happy to have you. And for those who are worshiping with us for the first time, hope and trust that you will receive the blessing that we have been receiving here at Macedonia. Amen. I just want you to sit back and forget about the troubles and the trials and the temptations in the world. Just relax and focus heavenly war as God have a message for us today. I'm gonna mix history with Bible. Our history with history. Because the Bible is history. What do you say? Amen. Right, so I want you to just relax because you're on a vacation. When you're on a vacation, you don't worry about anything. Isn't that true? Yes. You are on a vacation. Today is the vacation that the Lord has given unto us so that we can rejuvenate and we can be in contact with Him. But today, I have chosen to speak to us in the caption, Knowledge shall increase. Say thanks to Ella Chris for those two lovely sons. Our loving Savior, our great God, and our King. We come again today because we are hungry. We ask you to feed us spiritually. We pray, Lord, that you will give us the strength which we need in times like this. So, Lord, we are in the last days. So we pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit will embed it upon us and give us strength to live in our hearts, live in our home. Speak to us today, we pray, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. In Daniel 12, 1, 
familiar text. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince who standeth for the children of thy people. There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that time, even unto that same time, that the time that people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. So I want us to understand today that Michael will stand up for us is Jesus Christ. He come on earth and he stand up for us. He bore it all. And so in the last days, he will stand up for us also. He is saying to us that there's going to be a time of trouble since, there, since it wasn't a nation. And so he is comforting us that he will stand up for us. There is nothing for us to fear because he will stand up for us. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is pointing us to his coming. His second coming. When there's going to be a resurrection. When many will rise to life everlasting. And some will rise to shame. Some will shame of him. Those who face him. But we who are righteous will have everlasting life. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. They that turn many to righteousness as a star forever and ever. And these are those who preach and teach the gospel. Those who never water down the gospel. Those who say, thus said the Lord. They never add now, they never take away. And so they will turn many to righteousness. They will call them out from Babylon. And that is the message we should be preaching today. Calling all the people from Babylon. But old Daniel shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end. And men shall run to and fro. And knowledge shall increase. Amen. So when Daniel saw the vision. Daniel was troubled. He was worried. Because when he see the things. He believed that it would be in his days. So he started to tremble because these things that he saw was very serious. So that is simply telling me that in Daniel times it was heading towards the end. But today we are in the end. In the very end. What do you say? Based upon what the Bible says to me right now, we are in the end. Because he told them to shut up the book and seal it until the time of the end. And what Daniel saw is happening today. Amen. Knowledge increase and men running to and fro. My brothers and my sisters, as we look in Nahum chapter 2 and verse 3 to 4, you know, this was talking about when Nineveh was about to destroy. I want to let you know that. I love to use typology. And typology always mixed well with the Bible as long as it is in context. So Nahum chapter 3, 4, 2, 3 to 4, it says, The shield of this mighty man is made red. The violent men are in scarlet. The church shall be with flaming torches in the days of his preparation. And the fig tree shall be terrible shaken. Now, what this is talking about is the preparation for Jesus' second coming. And so it says in the last days, these things will happen. If we notice today, we have chariots. And these chariots is known as motor cars. And so they, their lights are so bright. It says it's like flaming torches. Isn't that true today? Was this in, in the time of Daniel, did they have cars? Did they have um, um, bright lights, light torches? No. And in the days of his preparation, and the fig tree shall be terribly shaken. 
No, the fir tree. I wonder what it was. But when I look it up, it's an ever evergreen ever tree. And it is in various types. So this fir tree, they mostly use them to make Christmas tree. And so it says that they shall be terrible shaken. I don't know why, but the Bible says in, in the last days they will be terrible shaken. The church shall rage in the streets. They just one against another in the broad way. Can't we see that? If you look, we have at least five men there. Um, and that is one way. And they are jostling against one another. They are, they, they are, they are so fast like lightning. You know, if you stop on, on, on the highway, and when they are passing you, it seems as if your vehicle is going to blow off the road. I know you experienced that. They are moving so fast. They are raging in the street. They are jostling against one another in the broad way. I know we have so much broad road. And they say it seems like torch. They run like lightning. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, these motor vehicles are very fast. When you compare them to horse and cat, you remember those days? We call them horse and cat. When the horse pulled the, the cart. No, today we have them running like lightning. You notice if you're on the highway, even a truck, a truck was known to be the slowest vehicle on the road. But today we have a semi-trailer with their cargo. And tell you when they pass you on the road, it seems as if you are going back way. Yeah. This is knowledge, my brothers and sisters. Knowledge increase. And this is to tell us that we are in the last days. It says knowledge increase and men run to and fro. What does this mean? It means that man is traveling all over the place. Man is moving to and fro. And by man moving to and fro, the economic booster. And if you notice that the construction of the roads, it is amazing. When we look at them, how they can make the roads and it take you up to a height. And it take you back down. Road stop off road, leading in different direction. My brothers and my sisters, this is knowledge. Knowledge has increased. No? We could say it is a big word, right? This word is a big word. I realize that Germany, I understood that the United States would just jump into Germany. So imagine if the United States just jumped into Germany. Can you see how big this world is? This world is very big. But today I can assure you that this world is not big anymore. This world become a small place. You know somebody can call you from England or Japan and it seems as if they are beside you. This world is very small because of knowledge increased. And this is to tell us that Jesus is soon to come. I've realized that the second coming of Jesus Christ have not spoken of too much in the church. We hardly hear about it. But I want to assure you that we are living in the time of his preparation when he is coming soon. And so when you look at the bridge over troubled water. Look how man has formed these roads. And if, imagine they have built roads that took you underneath the sea, miles and miles away. And all these roads that go underneath the sea, you have big ships on top of them, big ships sailing over these tunnel under the sea. You know, for a tunnel to be underneath the sea and a big ship to be sailing above and top, you have to have at least 85 feet depth underneath the sea so that the ship can travel. This is knowledge, my brothers and my sisters. I remember 
And that when, you know, we, when we travel to New York, how I plan traveling to New York, I wait until there's an opportunity. Because I do not want to waste time and, and resources. So I wait till the opportunity comes so that we can take the stone and kill one bird. And so we and the family will gather together when the situation arises. And so we took a road trip to New York. And those are for, a forgettable memories. When we traveled and we sight seeing and when we see the natures and the, the, the majestic work of God's hand. It is marvelous. And so when it was our time to come back from New York. And so we approached the George Washington Bridge. And lo and behold, we took a road. We find ourselves on the wrong road. And so we go through a tunnel. A long tunnel and we drive for miles. And I decide that I'm not going to work myself. I'm going to stay on the road. And so we drove and we drove and then we see a sign and it says 95. And so we head for the 95 so we are heading to Florida. My brothers and my sisters, it is very marvelous to see how God has increased the knowledge of men. God has given men increase of knowledge. And no, but there in, 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 in England, you know, between England and Paris, it took them a long time to go to Paris from England and from Paris to England. And ferry was the, the, the route that they mostly traveling. So they decided that they are going to build a tunnel under the, the hills. And so they started to build this tunnel. And they start from Paris and they start from England. And when they met up, they met up exactly right in the middle. And so these are but a few technology in the world. It says, Calas France, for many Americans, the idea of taking the train from England to France, or versus versa, means one thing. But the Aerostar, but actually Aerostar is just one customer of much larger operation. The Euro Tunnel, otherwise known as the Tunnel. Since the 31 mile long tunnel opened in 1994, more than 265 million passengers and more than 53 million vehicles, including 16 million heavy goods vehicles, have traveled across its tracks. Every day, 50 Aerostar train take passengers between London and either Paris or Brussels, but that's just a fraction of the 450 train a day that pass through the tunnel, carrying trucks, containers, cars, buses, more, and because it takes train just 35 minutes to go between a continent and England, the tunnel has become serious competition for the ferries that used to dominate such transport. My brothers and my sisters, because of knowledge increase today, there are many business out of business. You remember when they used to go to the call box? We used to join up in line waiting to make a call to, to foreign. You remember those days? No more with those things. They are out now because knowledge has increased. Business, those business has gone. And so with the ferry today that used to dominate back then, they don't need them anymore. Much more, they are too slow now. Now they can take you to, to Paris in what? In just what? 31, it just, just 35 minutes from, from England to Paris. Knowledge increase, my brothers and my sisters. And while the Aerostar is by far the most well-known customer of the Euro Tunnel, many companies are customers of the Paris-based organization that runs the tunnel, and it also runs its own train, selling space to passenger cars, truck, buses, and other vehicles. Here we see one of the era owned locomotive emerging from the tunnel. So if you, if you go to England, you'll see that picture there. You'll see the tunnel if you ever travel on it. So this is one. And so surprising that knowledge increase and men is running to and fro. 
It's so hard to know that you'll go to school and study for four or five years. And when you finish your study, there's no job for you. Because that is gone. There is no business for that. It is outdated. And this is where we are. We are running at a fast pace today. And so it says that it would be a rapid one. Things are moving so fast. Sabbath has come so quickly. One after another. You can't believe. My brothers and my sisters, we are in the end. Are we preparing? He said this boy in 747, commonly called a jumbo jet, make a cargo transport flight. The 747, the first of the wide bodies commercial jet, had its inaugurate, in, inaugural flight in 1970. Four jets engine propelled the plane, which reaches cruise speed of 885 kilo hours. Such aircraft generally cruise at speed at approximately 540 miles or 870 kilo hours at altitude high enough that aircraft pressurize is required. 550 miles per hour. You know, one time I was traveling into the plane and I was looking how much the plane was, how fast it was going. It was 550 miles per hour the plane was going. My brothers and my sisters, when you look at this cargo plane, you know a cargo plane, it, it carries all type of things, cars, whatever, very heavy. And when you look and you can see that this plane lift up off the ground, way into the sky, this heavy metal, this heavy iron, way up in the sky, and it is moving at speed, so fast man it is it is you can't you can't fathom it you can't fathom it are you thinking a plane is going that fast in the sky way up way up in the sky it took off from the earth way up technology my brothers and my sisters and because of knowledge and because they studied and God has given them the knowledge they could be able to lift the plane. And let me tell you something. When you go to the airport, you will see a thing up there in the sky like a balloon with a hole. You know what that for? It's to tell you where the breeze is blowing. And so the plane will either land, land against the breeze and the plane will took off forward to the breeze. The reason for that is that when the airplane develop a certain speed, and so when it, the force of the wind coming, and when they open up the wings, the, the, the breeze, the air lift the plane. That's the air, it lift the plane in the sky, and it propelled by the engine, and way up, way up, way up, that plane gone right up in the sky and it's moving. It's moving. I don't know, it can't say jet speed. It's moving so fast. Imagine how marvelous that is. For I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Since the Lord thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So the Lord is thinking of us. And the Lord wants to give us an expected end. And so many times we read the Bible and we stop right there. But let look what it says. Then shall he call on me, and he shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And he shall seek me and find me, when he shall search for me with all your heart. What did God say? When you search for me, with all your heart, he will give you an expected end. So now, my brothers and my sisters, if you look at these ships, these ships are like buildings, hotels, 18th story, 19th story, big ship moving on the ocean. This is knowledge increased, my brothers and my sisters. 
God has given man the ability to do these things. And so, there are many things which are happening. And we say that it is God give knowledge. But let me tell you something. God has given man knowledge. And when God given man knowledge, God expect man to use the knowledge to glorify him. Yeah. But is man glorifying God with the knowledge that he has given them now? No, they are not. And so Isaiah 1, 18 says, Come now and let us reason together. What did, what did, what did Jesus say? Come, Come now and let us reason together. No. My brothers and my sisters, debate cannot work. When we debate, it doesn't reach nowhere. Debate is sometimes of the devil. And so Jesus is saying, come now, let us reason together. Have you been reasoning? When you reason and you reason out, Jesus is saying, come, let us reason together. He says, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Yes, I know that the devil sometimes, because of the sin which we have committed, he discouraged us. And so sometimes we look back on our sins and we are afraid to go to Jesus. But Jesus said, come, come, let us reason together. Let us reason together. We need to reason with Jesus now because we have seen how knowledge has increased and the knowledge that is increased is telling us that Jesus is even at the door. And let me tell you one of the things that Satan used to discourage us. While the Bible says, young man, I call upon you while you are strong. He says, young man, I call upon you while you are strong. While the evil days come nigh. But Satan says, look, you know, sister, you're too young. You know, sister, you're too pretty. You're not living a life yet. Go live some life first, man. And so you listen to the devil. And so when the time come now, you decide to give your hearts to the Lord. He come back to you and said, you know, see, you get too old now. What you going to do? Give your hearts to God. It's too late now. And guess what? You lose out. You lose from the kingdom and he win. But Jesus is saying, come, come, let us reason together, my brothers and my sisters. Let us reason together. Jesus is kind of for us to reason with him. He says the Panama Canal allows ships to travel between the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean, saving them a long journey around the tip of South America. And so, you know, it's 48 mile long. Some say it's like 51. International waterway known as the Panama Panama Canal allows ships to pass between the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, saving about 800 miles from a journey around the south tip of South America, Cape Horn. So you see, my brothers and my sisters, that the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean is on the east side and the Pacific on the west side. And so they want to make it easier to come across, to join the, the, the Pacific and, and the Atlantic together. But there was a problem somewhere in Panama. But somebody found out that the shortest route was about 51 miles long. And so the United States is ready to do that seems impossible to join the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. What a major dis decision has to be made should the canal be built at sea level like the Suez can Canal. But listen, the Suez Canal was built by the French. The Suez Canal joined the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. But in that um, time, it is like the, the, the two sea was on the same level. So it wasn't a problem. And they must have to dig through sand. So that was easy. They could do that. But with the Panama Canal, it, the highest peak is 85 feet tall. And for you to cut through that hills, and to get it down to 85 feet to the level of the sea, and then you need another 85 feet 
below that's a impossible thing. What do you say? Think about it. That would be impossible. It would be impossible. So you say, find the, f the failure of the French. I just want to let you know that I'm not doing it in sequence. I I'm doing it like how the Bible written. Because the Bible is not written in sequence. But the Bible says those that are wise will understand. Find the, the failure of the French construction team in the 1880s. The United States commenced building a canal across a 50 mile stretch of the Panama Itmos. In 1904, the project was helped by the elimination of disease-carrying mosquito. While Chief Engineer John Stephen devised innovative technology and techniques and spurred it, crucial redesign from a sea level to a lock canal. I want you to understand the knowledge that come into this man's head. Instead of to dig in deep down, he decided to make a lock canal, a step up. You know what he's, he's going to do? He's going to lift the ship in, this, in the air. He's going to lift the ship way up to 85 feet above sea level. Do you think that it is possible? But with God, all things are possible. And so he decided to, to make some locks and, and make it like steps. And so when, when the ship come inside, they will open the lock gate and, and they will pour water in from the top. It's called um, Golden, Golden Lake. And so gravity feed it. And so while the water is coming down, the ship is lifting, is rising. Imagine my brothers and my sisters, a ship is so heavy, heavier than an aeroplane with cargoes on it. And the water lifts the ship. And so the, the ship lifts way up to 85 feet. And, and then they lower it just the same way to go across and versa versa. So they come up with a brilliant idea. So a stubborn mountain range and, over, and oversaw the building of the dams and locks opened in 1914. That was just the other day. Oversight of the world famous Panama Canal was transferred from the US to Panama in 1999. The grand project began drawing to a close in 1913 to steal shovel Working from opposite direction met in the center of Culebra Gut in May. And a few weeks later, the last spillway at Gotham Dam was close to allow the lake to swell to its full height. In October, President Walt Joe Wilson operated a telegraph at the White House that triggered the explosion of the Gambia Dyke, flooding the final stretch of the dry passageway at the Culebra Cut. The Panama Canal officially opened on August 15, 1914. Although the, the planned grand ceremony was downgraded due to the outbreak of WWI, that's World War I, complete at a cost of more than 350 million. It was the most expensive construction project in the U.S. history to, point, to that point. Altogether, some 3.4 million cubic meters of concrete went into the building the locks and nearly 240 million cubic yards of rock and dirt were excavated throughout the American construction phase. Of the, of the 56,000 workers employed between 1904 and 1913, roughly 5,600 were reported killed. You see, back then, it was so serious. You know, they were facing a lot of problems. You know, man was at war with nature. And nature was really fighting them. But we get to that further on. It's a blasters by the addition of Madden Dam in 1935. The Panama Canal proved a vital component to expanding global trade route in the 20th century. The transition to local overseas began with a 1977 treaty signed by US President Jimmy Carter and Panama leader Omar Torrejos with the 
Panama Canal Authority assumed full control on December 31, 1999, recognizing the American Society of Civil Engineers as one of the seven wonders of the modern world. In 1994, the canal hosted its one million passing ship in September 2010. One million ship passed through that canal in September 2010, just the other day. And so, because of this canal, America has gained the world power. That's how I learned that America become the world power. No um, Roosevelt. Roosevelt, Roosevelt enforced imperialism. What did he do? Enforced imperialism. Roosevelt wanted to build a canal in Panama to link the Pacific Atlantic Ocean. French company had acquired the rights to build the canal. In 1902, the U.S. brought the rights from the French company. All right. So the, you remember now, Colombia was in control of Panama. So America bought the rights from the French. But the Colombians decided that they are not going to allow America to build the canal because they believe that they have get a raw deal. So let me tell you what um, <laughs> the president did. What he did, he imposed imperialism. So he, he started to gather up his warship down there. And what really happened, he took it from Colombia and give it to Panama. Panama become independent. And so Panama become independent, they know they could make an agreement with Panama. That is imperialism. You see, imperialism definition and history respective. It says, government growing stronger by taking over poorer or weaker country that have important res um, resources. So this is imperialism. No matter if you have something, they're going to force and take it from you. Aren't you seeing that happen? Yes. The Bible says, who is able to make war with the beast? My brothers and my sisters, this is what is happening in the world today. It says an example of imperialism was England practice of colonizing India. The policy and practice are seeking to dominate the economic or political affair of undeveloped areas or weaker country. So because you are weak, they will come in and rape your country. They will take what they want from your country and you cannot say anything. Right. Evil in Haiti, that's what happened. The policy and practice of farming and maintaining the empire and seeking to control raw material and work world market by the conquerors of other countries, the extermination of colonies, etc. The policy of forceful extending a nation authority by territorial gain or by the establishment of economics and political dominance over the nation, a political doctrine or system promoting such extent of authority. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, what do you think gonna uphold? What do you think gonna be imposed on God's people who are keeping the commandments? They're gonna do the same thing. They listen, it is typology. They are going to do the same thing. And remember, it is America gonna give back the peace its power. I want you to take note, my brothers and my sisters, we cannot stand in their way. Nothing stand in their way. You know that? Nothing stand in their way. So who is able to make war with the beast? None of us. But guess what? Michael. Michael will stand up for his children. Michael will stand up for us. Remember, if you want Michael to stand up for you, your name must be written in the book. Yes, your name must be written in the book. And that simply means that you must be a commandment keeping people. Because the commandment keeping people is what gonna cause them to want to overthrow us. Because they want to have their own way. 
And so because that knowledge increased, you're going to see what happened. You're going to see what happened. The Roosevelt appointed Panama Canal Commission could not agree on a plan. And there were inadequate tools and equipment of uh, atrocious working and living condition and low workers' morale. Then in June 1905, the chief engineer, engineer John F. Wallace suddenly resigned most for fear of yellow fever and which has infected 134 people and caused 34 deaths on the canal. Roosevelt was furious. He get mad now. God guess what? He went down there by, by, by Panama. It was the first president, I understand, that leave office and went out. And he went down there in bad times and he, he wanted to see what happened. And he, he, he energized the people and gave them the assurance. And he also, he took the seat of, of, of the crane that was moving the stone and he operated. And so he built their confidence. And so John Wallace was the man in charge and he was depending upon him. But guess what? John Wallace, he resigned. He was afraid. But guess what? The president said, look, all right. I am going to employ a soldier. Who is going to employ? A soldier. A soldier who will not quit unless I tell him to quit. My brothers and my sisters, we are soldiers. What do you say? We are soldiers in the army of God. And so let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, we have to hold up the bloodstained banner. What do you say? We got to hold it up until we die. Yes, we are soldiers in the army. We're going to fight until we die. Yes, we're not going to quit. We have a message for the world. We have a message for the Joconians. We are not going to quit. We are soldiers in the army and we're going to fight. We're going to fight. We're going to hold up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. Yes. And so, you know, because of the, the, the war with, with nature down there. Listen now. William Crawford Gargas, he was a physician. He was in Cuba and he understood the mosquito. The mosquito is the one who transferred the disease. So he went to Panama. And when he went to Panama and he explained to them, the politician started to fight him out and say it is nonsense. And they claim that it is feces and stuff like those that are causing the malaria and the, and the, yellow, and the yellow fever. And so they decided that they don't want this man. And they fight him out. But I want to tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. If we have a problem, we must first cause it find the cause of the problem. What do you say? Are you going to keep on fixing the problem and keep on fixing the problem and you're not finding the cause? If you don't find the cause, you're going to have problem continually. And so if you have your car and your fuses keep blowing and you keep on putting fuse in it, it doesn't solve the problem. You must find out what is causing the fuse to blow. And when you find the problem, you fix it. And there will be no more fuse that will be blown. And so if you even switch the fuse and put a, a higher amperage in it, you are bound for trouble because you're going to create fire, something going to damage. So we must find the root cause of what is happening in our life. And let me tell you something. This pandemic that they have, it is a root problem. And they are not finding the root problem. They are coming up with solutions at all times and it is not helping. And there are people with knowledge from God who can come up with this cure for it, but they don't want it. They don't want it. And so they do with Crawford. And so the president fired him. And so there's a man come to the president and he said, look, that's why I love Jesus, you know. Jesus is mediating for us. Amen. Jesus is pleading our case to, to God. You better believe it. So this man come to the president and he said, look, if you want this channel to come to perfection, 
to, to, to finish, you have to hire a crafter. If you look on the $1 bill, you'll see his picture. You'll have to hire him. And so the president listened. And so he hired back um, Crawford. And Crawford, the, the president said, give him all that he need. And so he, he went down and he said, look, all work must be stopped. All work must be stopped. And so the work stopped. And he started to put up a war against the mosquito. And so he, he put nets around those who were infected. And so he started to, 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 to look for all the water segment. And so he used oil and started to kill out the lovers. And so the, the, the disease rate is going down, is going down. I remember when I was back in Jamaica too, we used to put oil, like coconut oil in the water. So that, you know, you know, we used to drink the water, so we put coconut oil. So that it could not farm the mosquito. And so he went into the hospital to the last patient. And he called them in and said, look, this is the last one that will be died from malaria. And so the war was won. Amen. But listen, there was still more war. Because when they, they, when they are, 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 are working and, and, and almost every day rain falls, we have, they have rainfall. And so guess what? They will have landslides. And so when they have landslides, the landslides will come and cover up all the workers. They are buried up. And so when they them have to use dandamite, one time a man was, was, was loading the dynamite into the hole and somebody made a mistake and touched the wire and, and, and all his body parts was all over the place. And so when these men were carrying the dynamite, they have to make, they, 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 they make a will because they don't have to come back. And so dangerous was, was it was. Many people have lost their life. I cannot go into all the details. It took too long. You have to go and do your study for yourself. There's a lot of history behind it. Racism and all these things was there. There was no justice. Even though God has given them the knowledge, they have exploited the poor. But God says that when you exploit the poor, he too will be furious against you. We must, be, we must take care of the poor. When we take care of the poor, we lend unto God. And so my brothers and my sisters, this is where, 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 uh, where knowledge has taken us. I know knowledge is going too far. And so you will say that, all right, God has given man the knowledge to make a vaccine. Well, let me tell you, that's not of God's plan. I know they are coming up with, with this designer baby, designing baby. My brothers and my sisters, when God created this world and he found man, he said everything was good. You don't need to, to, to trouble God's creation. So no, they are making babies the way they want them. It says a designer baby is a baby who genetic made up has been selected or altered. Often include a particular genes or a removed genes associated with a health condition. So no, they are coming up where they can make the baby to who they want the baby to be. No, they, they have CRISPR. CRISPR is the scientists who have found out how the DNA works. So the DNA is like a ladder with rungs. So if you twist the ladder, that's what it will look like. And so it has its connection. And so they have come up with this discovery and they are using it now. It says a segment of DNA containing short repetition of base sequence in the defense mechanism of prokaryotic organism to various virus or genetic engineer to that use of a CRISPR sequence of DNA and its associated um, protein to edit the base pair of genes using the um, genome editing tool known as CRISPR, research were able to select to select si um, silence to to select 
um, cell and two genes in human polo, what, pol, palpilo, virus, whatever that be. So listen now, the word CRISPR. We only hear of CRISPR, but we need to know what it means, what, what the abbreviation and what it stands for. And the abbreviation is Cluster Regular Interspace Short Plain Jomic Repeat. That is what it stands for, CRISPR. And so they are using CRISPR today to edit in the human being. They are editing God's creation. And so when they edit God's creation, that is telling me no, that they are going too far. Yes. They are going too far. He says, no, this only have I found that God has made man upright, but they have sought out their many invention. God has do what? Make man upright, but guess what? Man has sought out invention in unrighteousness. And so we can see the invention coming up from way back then. You know, we have Bill Gates who have invented Microsoft. And so he dominated the world. But well, I want to tell you that even though he has the knowledge, he does not regard God. He does not respect God. And so he is using the knowledge that he has from God to disrespect God. He is serving the devil instead of serving the almighty God. And so it says, and it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were feared, and they took them wife of all which they choose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh. Yea, his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. So I want to tell you now that the time has come when God has repented that he has been men. Men is going too far. And so it is saying that, you know, the sons of God were murdering unto the sons of men. So the sons of God is those who are serving God or who call God by name. But the sons of men are those who are serving Satan. And so they come into them and took them wife. And so God decided that it will not last any longer. And it says the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled of violence. Are we not seeing that today? This earth is full of violence. He says, and God look upon the earth, and below it was corrupt, for all flesh has corrupt in his, in his ways upon the earth. Yes, God has saw that this world is corrupt, and he decided to make an end to it. And I'm telling you, God has given um, Noah the instruction how to build the ark. And let me tell you, if Noah didn't Follow it as all God says, he would be in trouble. So when God tells us to do something, we have to do it exactly the way how God says. And God says, six days he made the heaven and the earth. But the seven days, the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt rest them. So we cannot do otherwise. We have to follow God the exact way as what he says. You may say that God is not exact. I'm telling you, God is very exact. What he says, he means. And what he says, he will do. And so, my friends, when, when the people um, were there mocking and jeering and saying that this can't be because they have never seen rain yet. And so they never believe. And so Noah warned and warned and warned and warned until the rain come. And this Bible says, thus did Noah according to all God command him. So did he. So when God command us to do anything, we must do what? Do it exactly how God says. And Noah, Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the water was upon the earth. 
And Noah went in, and his son and his wife and his son's wife with him unto the ark, because of the water and of the flood, and of the clean beasts and of the beasts that are now clean and fold, and of everything creepeth upon the earth. And they went in two and two unto Noah, and the ark, male and female, as God has commanded Noah. And it came to pass seven days that the waters of the flood were seven seven days that the water of the flood was were upon the earth. And in the six hundred years of Noah life, in the second month, the seventeen days of the month, the same day were all fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of the heaven were open, and rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. So I'm telling you. God has won, and when God won, it has happened, my brothers and my sisters. So we have to hear what God says. Amen. But guess what? After the flood, no, God decided that he will not bring water upon the earth. Don't worry, I'm coming down. He will not bring water upon the earth anymore, no more flood. And it says, and all flesh died that move upon the earth, both falls and cattle, and of beasts, and of every creeping things that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, and all in those natural breaths of life, of all that was in the dry land, died, and every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both men, cattle, creeping things, and the fall of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark, and the water prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. So you see, God said it, and it come to pass. But now, God has made a covenant, and he says that he will not destroy the earth with water no more. But he will destroy it with what? With fire next time. And so I am seeing a set of people who have taken the rainbow to be their emblem, to be their, 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 their sign. And knowing that God says that this is a sign to let us know at his second coming or his third coming that it's going to be fire. Fire going to burn up this earth. And so if you condone yourself in sin, you're going to be burned. So I'm telling you, every time we see the rainbow, it is a sign to remind us that Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to destroy this world with fire. So they have this rainbow as their sign, and they do not realize that what they are saying to themselves, that they are going to be burned. And it says that they will burn and leave neither root nor branch. And so when, when after the flood, you see, when God has said, tell us something, we still, and we don't believe him to the fullest. And so Nimrod took it upon himself, you now started to build skyscrapers. Nimrod, in Genesis chapter 9, he started to build skyscrapers saying that, look, he's going to build up to the heavens. That when the flood come again, it cannot overthrow them. When God already says that there will be no more flood, it will be fire. And so he start to build and he occupied. And God said, all right, too much is too much. You're going too far now. And so God come down and he answered by thunders and lightning. And he mashed down the Torah of Babel. The Torah of Babel is Babylon. And Babylon is today. And God is going to destroy Babylon. And so we are crying and we are saying and we are calling the people out of Babylon. Come out of her, my people. Yes, my brothers and my sisters. And so Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And so it says, so likewise, he, when you see these things come to pass, he shall he that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I said unto you, the generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And take heed to yourself, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with sophisticated and drunkenness and care of this life, and so that they come upon you unaware. I would like to fit this in that many of us today are drunken with false wine, with false doctrine and because of this the day gonna come up 
and us unaware. For as a snail shall it come, and all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, watching their foot, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. And at that time, what? At that time, Michael shall stand up. The, the, the great prince will stand up for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble as never was since there was a nation. And to that time, and to that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that we shall be found written in the book of life. My brothers and my sisters, we are coming up to the time of trouble. We have never seen a time like this. But I'm telling you to, 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 to remain faithful, remain calm. And, and knowing that Jesus is going to stand up for us, we are going to suffer many things, my brothers and my sisters. It is that far, it is around the corner, as long as we are alive, we're going to suffer many things. Because right now, the mark of the beast is actually upon us. We can neither buy ourselves. And so, my friend, they want to control us. They are going too far. Then God will step in. And he says, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake and some to everlasting life and some to shame everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. They that turn many to righteousness as the stars ever, forever and ever. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be. I know we are in the very time the same thing is happening. Man has no regard for God. Man is doing whatever they want to do. Knowledge has increased, but they are not giving God the glory. They are using it to throw in his face. And so they are destroying the human race. They want to make human with superpower. They want to make human that they can fight a soldier and, and last for long. They are turning us into robots. And who you know is behind it? Satan is behind it. And so we must seek God. So that when we seek God, we, he will give us the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding. And so I'm telling us it's not everything we should run and say yes to. We must seek God and, and ask God and God will lead us. And so many of us, oh, we are following the Jaconians, we believe in the Jaconians, we believe so much in the scientists, but I want to tell you something, the only time I'm going to believe in the scientists is when they are saying, thus said the Lord, is when they recognize the God of heaven, that's the only time I'm going to believe and go with them, because they are mixing up God in their nastiness, and they want us to believe that because they are saying this, we must believe in them. But my brothers and my sisters, I'm going to tell you who we should believe in. We must believe in who? Jesus Christ. He's the one who died for us. He's the one who come down from heaven and give his life for us. That through his death and his resurrection, we'll have life and have it more abundantly. So I'm telling you, my friends, my brothers and my sisters... The time is coming, and it is here when we'll have to make a stand for Jesus. I just want to encourage us, for us to watch and look at the signs of the time. Jesus' eminence is near. I hope and trust that you are watching and waiting. You are praying, and you decide that you will not bow to that old serpent, the devil. Remember that he is a roan like a warring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Come to Jesus. Jesus says, come to me. Let us reason together. Reason. Let us reason with Jesus. Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be as white as snow. My brothers and my sisters, I want to meet you in heaven. Will you be there? Amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We thank Elder Steve for 
the message and the information that has been imparted to us. And we owe it to ourselves to know the time in which we live in. That is high time that we awake out of our slumber. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. We will stand and sing for closing. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. The soldiers of the cross, hymn 618. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer lost. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift up his royal banner, it must not suffer. So may the Lord bless and keep you today. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace at home, at work, at play, in the church, in Jesus' name. Let God's people say, Amen. 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 Peace. Jesus, Lord, with blessings we as from thy worship we go away, that in thy songs we go through the day, save in thy kingdom, thy kingdom. 
And as we, this church has been providing a lot for us from the very inception of the church.